Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so um, I'm Neil Heffernan from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Uh, Ryan Baker is also at uh, WPI, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and uh, we both do educational data mining, and so we've been doing it for about 10 years. Ryan's the president of the society, um, and uh, how many of you even knew there was such a thing as an educational data mining society? Oh, that's great. Okay, there's a journal. Uh, papers are due February 5th. Uh, so just get cracking. Uh, so all right, let's go. Um, um, so educational data mining is about predicting uh, the future and actually changing the future. Um, so we already know that these cyber learning tools that we actually have are good at actually assessing actually what students know. But there's more to life than actually assessing. Uh, some, of the, some of the cyber learning tools like Cognitive Tutor or Assistments or many other products that actually some people in this room actually have, have built um, uh, do a good job of doing data mining to predict actually what's, is the kid going to get the very next action right or not. But um, there's more to actually life than that. Um, so it's the tip of the iceberg, actually. Um, we care about a lot. Um, um, a lot more than just actually is, uh, uh, is, is the student going to get the next question right? We care about stuff like this. Are they going to fail the course? Are they going to be prepared for the next course? Are they going to be prepared to actually pursue a STEM career? Um, Ryan and I have an iTest grant related to longitudinally tracking students to try to predict uh, whether they're going to stay in, uh, in science and technology um, from data they collected when they were in middle school. So we care about actually much longer term outcomes and educational data mining can actually help us uh, analyze such things. We've already heard about the data deluge, this is Ryan's picture, uh, which I think is a good one. Um, so I want to actually um, uh, bemoan actually the data deluge. Uh, so, but educational data mining can actually help us um, take these huge data sets and do something with it. And so educational data mining, uh, and I won't actually read it uh, to you, but it's, it is to actually um, education research, what like bioinformatics is to data mining. Um, and uh, uh, different actually fields actually need certain types of data mining tools uh, for those types of contexts. So how many of you actually know about the Netflix Grand Challenge? They gave away a million dollars. OK, million dollars. Those of you that don't know, they gave away a million dollars to actually the team that could reduce the error in predicting which people like which movies by 10%. Um, that was really commercially useful. Um, that's um, it was kind of specific to actually this thing about which people like which movies based upon other aspects of um, uh, the characteristics of those students. So uh, the, the same people that actually won that prize the next year competed, um, competed, um, I'm going to go back, they competed in actually the KDDD Cup actually challenge that actually John Stamper, John, raise your hand, uh, over there um, actually put together. Uh, the prize there, because of course education is really important, that's more important than ranking which people like which movies, the prize was $3,000. Uh, and so my student won one of those prizes um, and um, just came in uh, right behind actually the guys that won this. Uh, so educational data mining is important. Where do you, how do you do educational data mining? Well, you take log data. Uh, this is a screenshot actually showing the individual actions that a kid is taking. In a given hour, kids will take hundreds of actions. They'll do things fast, they'll actually get things wrong, they'll actually use a science micro world and change settings and change them back. Uh, most of these systems will log everything they do except maybe the mouse movement, and some of them even log that. That gives you a really rich trace of information that you can actually use to try to study learning while it's happening. So, and you want to not just actually study actually the learning while it's happening, but also connect that to other things like career interest, uh, motivation, grades, lots of other things. In, uh, I like Ryan's actually comment here. Uh, increasingly, um, what we actually need is actually uh, not just collecting the data, but now we just need to connect it. So um, uh, um, John Stamper and actually Ken Katinger actually run the Pittsburgh Learning Science uh, uh, data shop. It's, a, it's the largest repository of actually educational data that you can actually go get. And so any of you researchers can feel free to go um, get an account, and it's all anonymous, and you can actually have hundreds of thousands of hours uh, that you can actually analyze. Um, they provide a set of tools. 
So um, I'll give you one example of actually data mining that, that uh, Ryan did um, with Al Corbett and actually Sujo Gatwa uh, at WPI. Um, and this is an interesting one. So they were actually using data mining in the uh, context of a genetics tutoring system uh, developed uh, by Al Corbett at Carnegie Mellon. And um, the, um, uh, of course they actually were using data mining to predict, hey, are kids gonna get their next action right? But they also wanted to actually look at measures of actually future learning. Um, so they were interested in seeing, hey, can kids learn effectively? F can, can, excuse me, can, can we build detectors that will allow us to detect which kids are going to learn from normal old text when they're done? We don't want to actually give them actually tutoring systems that actually they can only learn from these things because there's books out there and they're probably going to continue to be important, though maybe some people in this audience might just argue with that. I don't really care about that question. Uh, and so what they did, and I want to illustrate this from a data mining perspective, so they had hundreds of features, well, maybe not hundreds, but lots, um, lots of features about actually what the child was doing. Um, and some of these are actually features like off-task behavior. Um, Ryan actually pioneered um, building detectors of students, particularly the third one, gaming the system, and he's best known uh, for his work in coining that term, um, where he does quantitative field observations, walking into school classrooms, observing which kids are doing which, uh, which types of actions, going back to the computers, connecting those to the logs, and then being able to actually derive uh, valid models that will allow you to predict um, uh, things you care about. In this case, he was interested in predicting which kids are gonna learn from future texts. Um, one of the features he was using was his gaming detector. Uh, and uh, um, how many of you have heard gaming the system as a term for educational software? Okay, kids game systems in all sorts of ways, not just educational pieces of software. Um, these are some of the features that actually turned out to be um, best in his model. Um, and he's using standard machine learning techniques like crossfold validation to actually see that these generalize. So these are the features that actually you could use to determine um, whether, whether a child is going to actually do well in actually reading, um, learning from text uh, outside the tutor. Um, you'll notice many of these features have to do with the student's own metacognitive ability about how they learn. Um, and I think that's really important. We're trying to actually assist those students in actually learning about themselves. So um, um, on the right is the correlation of uh, Bayesian knowledge tracing, the kind of the, the cutting edge standard. Um, and on the left is actually his, uh, his detector that uh, I think was reliably better at actually predicting um, and being correlated with actually how are they gonna do um, uh, on learning from actually text outside. And so, as he said um, in the script he gave me, uh, uh, there's room for improvement, but actually we're, we're, we're making reliable improvements as we go. So, um, so educational data mining is about predicting the future, but also, um, uh, but also one of the key messages, and he already had my little face up there already, uh, is, uh, is his work with me and Janice Gobert um, on the Science Assistant Project, and I'm kind of the, the, um, uh, the director of the Assistant Project, um, is where we're collecting actually millions of rows. I think we're probably have 100 million problems solved uh, right now from 100 districts across New England. Um, all that data flowing on in that we actually need to analyze. And one of the key things is uh, making sure that we are actually assessing students, but also giving feedback as they go. Uh, so we're trying to actually break the, um, the cycle of actually let's give, let's waste a lot of instructional time on giving tests. Uh, and so anyways, that's one of the things about assessments. I could say a lot more about that and I won't. Um, so, but is it enough? Um, so what we really care about is we want to change the future. So. Um, Ryan actually, and many people call this sometimes discovery with models. So um, I was mentioning gaming. So here, here's some kids gaming the system in high school, right? They're off task and they're, um, and they're, um, and they're sleeping, right? So Ryan actually built a system. Um, this is Scooter the Tutor. Scooter would actually get angry if you actually start gaming. Uh, if you start actually just clicking through stuff and Scooter would actually get angry and also will give you more problems. 
So he showed actually reliable decreases in gaming behavior uh, and also increases in learning behavior from these students. Um, so he also actually can actually document actually differences in gaming behavior um, across actually a bunch of different settings. And so this is important also for administrators uh, and principals to actually understand uh, and policymakers about being able to use these data sets in interesting ways. So educational data mining, pr predicting the future and changing the future. Uh, and so Ryan wanted me to thank you for your attention. And actually, these are some slides actually from the Educational Data Mining Conference. Uh, and I'm happy to take questions afterward at their break. Thanks.